Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. The Raspberry Pi 5 was announced in October and I've finally been able to get my hand on it. Not just that, but after so many months, we're starting to see third-party M.2, PCIe M.2 adapters that are fairly cheap. This board is an adapter board for the Raspberry Pi 5 that connects PCIe M.2 SSDs directly to the Raspberry Pi's PCIe connection. This one in particular is the X1001 by Geekworm and it's a fairly standard board that goes in the top. They also have one for the bottom. But what I like about this board is that it doesn't take that much space and it's self-powered by the PCIe connection. If we take a look at the Raspberry Pi 5, I went ahead and mounted everything. This is what it would look like. Now the blower doesn't come with the board. Other than that, the board itself sits at the very top and it doesn't take the entire top, which is something you don't really see. Like I seen a couple of PCIe boards and they end up blocking the GPIO connections right here and the blower style fan right here. The only thing I don't like about this kit, it does come with the mounting hardware, but it only comes with three of them. And one of the things I don't like is that the Raspberry Pi 5 itself doesn't have any standoffs. Like if you add this board, it, it uses up all the ports and you end up having to worry about the Raspberry Pi 5 shorting out as a result. So what I did is I went ahead and added my own brass mounts to the very bottom of this kit. And it looks something like this. Now, this is a lot easier to, to manage because the Raspberry Pi 5 is actually standing off the ground by this distance and you don't have to worry about shorting. I also went ahead and added a PCIe M.2 SSD. This is the 970 Evo by Samsung. It is capable of up to like 2000 megabytes of reads and writes. I don't think the Raspberry Pi 5 is going to come close to even handling that speed because the Raspberry Pi 5 PCIe connection, which goes through this little ribbon is limited to a certain speed. I think it's gen two speeds of PCIe, but we're able to overclock it to PCI three and maybe we may be able to get some speed boost if we uh, overclock the connection. Uh, it's pretty, I'm pretty excited. The only downside for me right now is that I don't have an M.2 adapter to connect to my PC and flash Raspberry Pi OS into this NVMe SSD. What we need to do first is we're going to be booting of this micro SD card with the desktop environment and then flashing the uh, Raspberry Pi OS using Raspberry Pi Imager. So let's get started with that. Okay, I went ahead and inserted the micro SD card into my computer. Let's choose a device. We're gonna be using the desktop operating system for just so that we have access to Raspberry Pi Imager. Okay, let me edit the settings. Okay, so now it's going to flash and once it's done, oh, let me just add the password. Okay, so it's going to be flashing and we'll be back when it's done. Now we have the Raspberry Pi 5 desktop in the micro SD card. So let's uh, just click continue. It should have ejected it. We take the micro SD card and add it right here to the Raspberry Pi 5. We should be able to boot off this first and then flash the image into here. Let's go ahead and plug all the cables in. First, I'm going to be plugging the HDMI and then plug in power. Now let's go to the Raspberry Pi image. All right, so we're booted off the micro SD card running Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Remember, the reason we're booting off the micro SD card first is so that we can flash the NVMe SSD. I don't have an NVMe to USB adapter, so this is the best way forward for me. Uh, now that we're booted off the micro SD card, let's first open a terminal and let's make sure that Raspberry Pi OS and then the EEPROM is upgraded before we proceed to flashing the NVMe SSD. Uh, let's update Raspberry Pi OS first. sudo apt update and then double ampersand sudo apt upgrade dash y and I went ahead and did this in the background so that we're not all waiting for this to actually upgrade. Now, once the Raspberry Pi OS is updated, we need to update the EEPROM. The EEPROM is basically like the Raspberry Pi like firmware. This is like what they refer to it. And the way we do that is by running the command sudo RPI EEPROM dash update and then dash A. 
And according to this, there is an update available. And by running this command, the updates for the EEPROM are pending and I need to reboot. So let's go ahead and do reboot. The Raspberry Pi is going to reboot and then the changes are going to take effect. Okay, now that we are rebooted into the Raspberry Pi again, we can go ahead and open um, our Raspberry Pi Imager by going to the menu and going to Accessories and clicking Imager. Now we're going to be flashing for a Raspberry Pi 5, the operating system. We're going to be using this Raspberry Pi 5 as a server. Uh, I'm not interested in running the Raspberry Pi OS desktop, so we're going to go down here to Other, and then we're going to be choosing Raspberry Pi OS Lite. We're going to be installing Open Media Vault in the future, and you need to run a server-based the operating system that doesn't have a desktop environment. Now we're going to choose our storage and oh my God, I can't believe I'm choosing a two terabyte device. Once we choose the two terabyte NVMe SSD device, let's click next um, and let's add our settings. Okay. The host name for this is going to be Pi 5. The username is just going to be code fallacy. And then for demonstration purposes, this is also going to be code fallacy. Um, add your LAN. Because I am going to be using Ethernet, we're not going to be adding the LAN. Uh, let's set the locale. I am in the East Coast, so New York makes perfect sense. And let's enable SSH from here. Okay. Now that we have everything set, uh, set up, let's save it and click yes. And then yes. It's going to ask for our password. And now it's going to be flashing to a two terabyte NVMe SSD, which is insane to say. Okay. Now while it's flashing, let's go ahead and make some configuration changes to the EEPROM file. First, let me make this full screen. Since we're no longer going to be booting of the micro SD card, what we need to do is change the boot order. Let's change the boot order from going to uh, the micro SD card first to going to the NVMe SSD first. Okay. It's asking, it's uh, it already flashed, which means that it's actually reading and writing really fast. So let's go ahead and eject that. Basically this is already done. But what we need to do is before we reboot, let's make sure that it is targeting the NVMe SSD first. Let's go ahead and run the following command, sudo RPI EEPROM and then config and then dash dash edit. Now what we need to do is change the boot order. The NVMe SSD is this six right here. This six represents the NVMe SSD and one represents the micro SD card. So let's move the six to the very end of this number, then control O, con enter, control X to save it. And now it's asking us to reboot to apply the EEPROM configuration changes. So let's go ahead and power down first. I'm not going to reboot. I'm gonna power down and actually remove the micro SD card and then we'll get back to it. So let's do a uh, shutdown. and it's going to shut down, but I guess it didn't do it automatically. So let's go down here uh, and then click shut down. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to remove the micro SD card and reboot again. All right. So after rebooting the Raspberry Pi 5 and removing the SD card, this is the micro SD card that we were booting off at the beginning. We are now brought back to this black and white terminal device. This is Raspberry Pi OS Lite. It doesn't have a desktop or anything because we're, we plan on running this as a server. So the only thing I'm going to do here is get the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 5, and then I'm going to SSH into it from another computer and manage it from there. The only thing we need to do here is IF config, and we can see that it is connected at the 217 address for my local IP. So I'm going to switch to my Mac. Okay, so we have switched over to our Mac. 
and we're now going to be SSHing into the Raspberry Pi 5 booted from the NVMe SSD. Let's go ahead and type the SSH command, followed by the user, and then the IP address of the Raspberry Pi 5. It's going to prompt us for our password. And now we are in our Raspberry Pi 5, as you can see. Now, I do want to see something. I want to see what is the speed, the default speed from this Raspberry Pi 5 booting off an NVMe SSD. So I went ahead and loaded this website called pibenchmarks.com. And we're going to be copying this command right here. This will allow us to do a benchmark to see the reads and writes of the SSD. So let's paste that command and run it. It might take a couple of minutes, but we will know for sure what is the speed of this Raspberry Pi 5 booting from an NVMe SSD. Remember, all the boards are slightly different. This is a Geek, uh, Geek Warm board. Uh, maybe there are boards out there that are faster than the Raspberry Pi, or sorry, than the normal Geek Warm Raspberry Pi board, but let's find out for sure. The benchmark has completed. Um, it gave us a score of 31,000. I don't know what the score is, but what we are interested in is the disk reads and disk writes. And even though this NVMe SSD is capable of like 2,000 megabytes of reads and writes, we are only getting 416 megabytes per second. The reason this is happening is because the PCIe connection on the Raspberry Pi 5 is actually Gen 2. But thanks to Jeff Geerling and this article right here, we can overclock that to Gen 3 and see how much more of a speed improvement we really get. So let's go ahead and clear all of this. Let's go to our um, boot configuration and modify it so that we can tell it to use Gen 3 speeds. So sudo then boot config.txt. Oh, oh, sorry, sudo nano boot config.txt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Let's go all the way down to the file and let's paste the following. Now, remember, this is from Jeff Geerling's blog, so I'm going to have a link to it below. What we need to do is just specify these two parameters and tell it to use Gen 3 moving forward. So we can do Control O, Enter, Control X, and now we need to reboot so that the application takes effect. So reboot, sudo reboots. Now the Raspberry Pi 5 is going to reboot, but when we do so, we are going to rerun the benchmark and we should see faster results. The question is how fast? It looks like the Raspberry Pi 5 rebooted, so let's back an SSH into it. So what we're going to do is rerun that same command the benchmark command from pibenchmarks.com and hopefully we should be able to see improved speeds of uh, improved reads and write speeds from the NVMe SSD. And we can see that we went for, from 400 to 800 and the write speeds went from, I think it was 200 to, to 421. So speeds basically doubled, but it is still not up to the capabilities of the drive itself. I am actually happy with this because I think this is fast enough where we are escaping the use of micro SD cards, which is basically volatile memory in my opinion. The micro SD cards can fail easily, so being having the option to boot from an NVMe SSD is great. Now, what I would love to see, even though I like this board, even though I think this board looks amazing, what I would like to see is an actual board that connects and then converts that PCI connection to multiple SATA ports. For example, wouldn't it be cool if we can use a board and then have like six SATA ports and connect hard drives to it? Imagine the amazing RAID NAS configuration that we'll be able to build from that. That would be great. However, because it's really early on on the Raspberry Pi 5 uh, since its release, we're probably not going to see that for a little bit longer. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a NAS with this board running open media vault and all the other services through docker compose and i am actually going to use it as my personal nas i am going to be migrating from an old desktop that i have 
to this Raspberry Pi 5 board. And I'm going to be installing a lot more services so that I can self host even more. And hopefully the Raspberry Pi 5 can keep up. So if you're interested in that, please stay tuned. And if you like this video, if you found it insightful at all, all I ask is that you give it a like. Thanks. If you have any feedback, let me know below in the comments as well.